Hello everyone, good evening, welcome back to my channel Civil Zest. So today we want to discuss about a topic of soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering which is known as flow net. So first of all we have to discuss what is the definition of flow net. Here I have written the simplest definition of flow net and it's regarding terminologies. <laughs> so let us start. The graphical representation of flow of water through soil mass is called flow net. Means it is a graphical representation that how can we represent the flow of water through soil mass is called flow net. Means, a, means the water is flowing through the soil mass and this process is known as seepage. And how can we graphically represent that process of flowing of water or transportation of water through soil is known as flow net. So basically it is a diagram. Basically, it is known as flow net diagram. If we go towards the second definition, then see that a network of flow lines and equipotential lines is called flow net. So basically, flow lines and equipotential lines combined, combined result in the flow net diagram. So basically, flow net diagram is a combination of flow, flow, flow lines and electro and equipotential line. Now, these are the terminologies. Now, let us discuss what are the flow lines and what are the equipotential lines. Flow lines, the lines which represent the path of flow of water are called flow lines or stream lines. The line which represents the path of flow means, means uh, the flow lines or stream lines, they are also called as stream lines. These represent the path of flow, path of flow with the, which path the water will follow, water will follow in the soil. So friends, what are the equipotential lines? If we define them, the line connecting the points of equal head of water means uh, it is it is this line which connects the equal points means all the points on the equipotential line are at the same head and what is meant by head head means pressure energy head means the pressure energy of the particle in that point so let us uh, identify by the diagram let us clear and explain the concept this is basically a flow net diagram and we can say that here is a concrete dam, here is a concrete dam, earthen dam and gravity dam, you can say anything. This side is known as the upstream side, it is upstream side, upstream side and it is, this side is our downstream side. So friends, it is our upstream side of the dam and it is our downstream side of the gra gravity dam. So let us discuss that what is this height called. Uh, I mention it as H. H1. Let's say H1. So this H1 is basically the water head. H is represented. H is a symbol for water head here. And here is H1 at the upstream side. And if I write H2, then it is a it is a lower head. It is a lower head at the downstream side. So if we if we see the passage or the path of the water, then it will always move from the upstream side to the downstream side, or we can say that high head to low head. So basically, what is the uh, path of the water? It is from the high head to low head, high to low head. So friends, let us come towards our flow net diagram. This is our complete flow net diagram. Now here we mention that uh, what are the components. Let us see, this is our gravity dam, gravity dam or concrete dam or earthen dam. Here is H1 high head, here is H2 low head. Now what are these red lines which are propagating from the upstream side to the downstream side? You can see in this manner. These red lines are our flow lines or stream lines. So basically the line which represents the path of flow of water. So basically this is the path of flow of water that, that water is moving from the upstream side to the downstream side from high head to low head. So basically this is the path of flow of water which the flow lines are representing. So basically red lines are our flow lines which I mentioned here that red lines are our flow lines and also we can call them stream lines. So basically friends these red lines are our flow lines. Now discuss about the second term, equipotential lines. Our green lines are known as, green lines are equipotential lines which I have mentioned there. Now by definition the line connecting the points of equal head, what is meant by head here, 
हेड इज बेसिकली पोटेंशियल और वी कैन से दैट मैकेनिकल और प्रेशर एनर्जी सो बेसिकली एनर्जी हेड एंड पोटेंशियल ऑल आर द सेम वर्ड्स फॉर द हेड सो बेसिकली इन अदर वर्ड वी कैन से दैट एनी पॉइंट इन दीज ग्रीन लाइन्स आर एट द सेम पोटेंशियल आर एट मीन्स इफ आई सेलेक्ट दैट दिस पॉइंट दिस पॉइंट दिस पॉइंट ऑल दीज पॉइंट आर एट द सेम पोटेंशियल और एट द सेम एनर्जी इन द structure of soil so basically what is flow net flow net is the combination of flow lines and equipotential lines and here it represents that how the water flows from upstream side to the downstream side here one more thing that this is this you can see that rock this is our bottom structure of rock it can be sedimentary igneous or any other kind of rock but it is our rock stratum at the bottom so friends next we see about some characteristics and some other terminologies regarding to flow net so first of all let's see flow lines and equipotential lines intersect each other at 90 degree means flow lines and equipotential lines are perpendicular to each other they always intersect each other at an angle of 90 degree so it is a very easy concept that if we see the angle between flow lines and equipotential line green lines are equipotential red lines are flow lines so it will be 90 degree and same is the case with any where if we calculate if we see the difference see if we see the angle here so next is the next statement is the portion between two flow lines is called flow channel the portion between two flow lines and is called flow channel so what is the concept of flow channels that there is the basically the space or the area or the portion between two successive or two consecutive or two adjacent flow lines is called as flow channel so basically these are the two flow lines so these are the two flow lines so we can say that the space this space or the portion between two adjacent flow lines is known as flow channel so basically this is a flow channel this is a flow channel this whole this whole space is a flow channel similarly this uh, also these are two flow lines and the difference and the space between these two flow lines are a complete flow channel so basically this is the concept of flow channel that in our flow net diagram the portion between two adjacent always two adjacent flow lines is known as flow channel next if we discuss uh, this point the space between two adjacent equipotential line represent equipotential drop so similarly as we have discussed flow channel so in the case of equipotential line the space between two adjacent equipotential line represent equipotential drop so as we know that these green lines are our equipotential lines so the space between these portion space or area between our equipotential line represent one equipotential drop so we can say that this is one equipotential drop this is second equipotential drop similarly third fourth fifth sixth so here is it goes on basically our two concepts are clear that what is the difference between flow channel and equipotential drop next let us see number of flow channels nf is equal to number of flow lines minus 1 means it is a equation of uh, how we can calculate the number of flow channels in a flow net diagram so simply we have to subtract the number of flow lines by 1 and we can get number of flow channels so in a similar manner number of equipotential drops and d is equal to number of equipotential lines minus 1 so what we have number of equipotential lines subtracted by 1 and we have the number of equipotential drops now we have to discuss something further regarding the number of flow lines and number of equipotential lines we can say that here in this diagram number of flow lines are 1 2 3 4 because four red lines are are by vn clear by vn of to us so but this is a wrong this is a wrong concept why this is wrong because because the this layer the bond the layer at the bottom of the dam this layer at the top of the soil we also consider it as a flow line because the water propagates from it as the water propagates from this line this is the top layer so we can we consider it as a flow layer flow line so basically it is also flow line basically this blue line is also a flow line and secondly this line this line this and so these are the four equi uh, flow lines and in the last we also calculate the 
consider this rock surface this rock surface as a flow line because these lines also touches and passes through the that rock surface so as all these layers are involved in the transportation or passage or seepage of water so we consider one two three four five six flow lines here in this case in this diagram of net flow flow net so next guys we have to discuss about the number of equipotential lines similarly in the case of as in the case of flow lines we also consider um, as we can discuss that uh, we can count the number of green lines 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 uh, from the diagram we can see that there are seven number of equipotential lines but this is also wrong why because this line this line on the upstream side if we see at one point at there one point at there one point at this line three points three different points at this line on the upstream side of the gravity dam then we we come to know that all these points are at equal head and by definition we know that the line which connects equal points of which connects the points of equal head of water is equipotential line so as all these points are at equal heads therefore it is also our equipotential line so this blue line on the upstream side is also our equipotential line it is also our equipotential line so this equipotential line similarly in the case of downstream in the case of downstream side if all these points are at equal head of water so also we consider it this downstream side line in equipotential so basically 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so basically in this diagram we have two further more equipotential line totally nine equipotential lines by the in the in this diagram so basically the concept is that in the case of flow lines we consider this top layer and this rock surface also as flow line and in the case of equipotential line we consider upstream side and downstream side also as equipotential line so this is basically about the counting of the number of flow lines and equipotential lines we have to discuss further more a term which is known as flow field so let's see the space between two flow lines and two equipotential lines is called flow field now what is the difference between flow channel and flow field the portion between two flow lines is called flow channel but the portion or space or area between two flow lines and two equipotential lines so let us see in this diagram basically the, this is a portion between two flow lines between two red flow lines and two green equipotential lines so this portion which i am mentioning it this portion which i am mentioning is known as a flow field similarly we can say here that these are the two red flow lines and these are the two uh, green equipotential lines this area is also flow field so there are a number of flow fields in a flow net diagram so basically you have also you also have to understand that what is the difference between flow channel equipotential drop and flow field in the topic of flow net so next point after the definition of this flow field next is another point flow field is square for isotopic soil, soil and rectangular for anisotropic soil now what is the difference between isotropic soil and anisotropic soil first of all we have to discuss that isotropic soil is a soil which have the same properties in all direction means its particles have it possesses same direction in all the different directions but in the case of anisotropic soil it change the properties of the soil changes with respect to the direction means as we go towards a different direction therefore a different properties of the soil exist so basically this is the difference between isotropic soil and anisotropic soil now comes to our point regarding to the flow net the flow field is square for isotropic soil that this flow field is is square in shape for the isotropic soil it will be square in shape but it will be rectangular in shape for an isotropic soil so the shape of our flow field in the flow net diagram depends upon the isotropic soil or an anisotropic soil the nature of soil that either the soil is isotropic or anisotropic so it is also one of the important points of the flow net diagram next we have to discuss a formula which is which you can see here um, total flow is equal to Q capital Q is equal to K into HL into NF divided by ND now we have to discuss that total flow is represented by Q that Q is the amount of water or the flow of water passing through the water in, in a complete process of seepage so next in this formula K is basically 
permeability or hydraulic conductivity of soil that it is a question or hydraulic conductivity of soil that how can the soil how uh, how efficiently the soil can allow the passage or the seepage of water so basically k is the permeability of soil next if we discuss hl basically it can be represented also by delta h or the head difference it is basically the difference of the level of water head you can see that there is a high head high head at the upstream side and low head at the downstream side there is some height h1 at the upstream side and h2 at the downstream side therefore we can say that it is delta h is equal to h1 minus h2 delta h is the head difference between h1 and h2 h1 and minus h2 so it is the head difference or we can also say it it is as head loss so basically what hl represent hl represent the head loss head loss in that dam between upstream side and downstream side so you can place delta h h1 minus h2 head loss in here in this position next simply nf is equal to number of flow channels which we have also discussed that it is number of flow lines subtracted by one and also in the same way nd number of equipotential drops is equal to number of equipotential drops minus one so basically this is the formula when we have to calculate the total flow quantity of water in the soil in the numerical um, in the numerical of net flow so if we conclude the whole topic that what is flow net flow net is a combination of combination or network of flow lines and equipotential line and it is a graphical representation of the passage of water through the soil and next what are the flow lines it basically represent the path and what are the equipotential line it basically are the lines that and that each point at the line represents or possess equal potential or head or pressure energy so similarly next guys we discussed about how to calculate the number of flow lines and equipotential lines so here we see that number of flow lines is equal to six including these four uh, four flow lines and five is our top layer and six is our rock surface and similarly number of equipotential lines are is equal to nine seven is our green equipotential lines and uh, eight is upstream side line and bottom is our downstream side which we also consider as equipotential line and next is the concept of flow field which we have discussed and after all that we have we have discussed that what is the formula of total flow of soil q is equal to khl into nf divided by nd so all is this concept about flow net if you like my video and you understand the concept then kindly share this and subscribe my channel we will meet in next video thank you